Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just allow me a moment to share this so uh, Councillor Ross Robinson can also see the presentation. Uh, so thank you for inviting me to the uh, to the um, standing committee meeting today to give a little update on <clears throat> you know some frequently asked questions about what's taking place, where to go, where to get things, uh, but also to give you a little bit of update on the uh, I guess the individual events that will be taking place that make up our celebration of the uh, total solar eclipse, not lunar, just as a point of clarification, um, uh, that's taking place on April eighth. So today I'm going to be going over uh, these items. Uh, so really the big one, the one I get the most questions about right now from the, the community is about where to get glasses. Um, and then I will go into each of these events, which there are six events um, that make up again our total celebration. I'll give you a little update on each one, when it takes place, where, uh, whether it's public uh, and if there's a cost associated with it and where to get a little bit more information. So glasses. So uh, the city of Miramichi uh, did order uh, 20,000 pairs of, uh, of solar uh, eclipse viewing glasses. Uh, they are here at City Hall and they'll be, we're going to start distributing those starting on April 1st. A number of reasons why we've picked that date um, and, and a lot of it has to do with making sure that every citizen in the city of Miramichi or any of our visitors that are coming to Miramichi are able to view the solar eclipse uh, safely. Um, with those pairs of glasses, we'll be also handing out a safety sheet that uh, Cliff Valley uh, Astronomy helped us uh, develop, which tells people when they should put them on. I, I guess the, the, the main thing is you should never stare at the sun at any point. However, there is a certain time period during the solar eclipse where you're encouraged and, and, and able to take off your glasses, and that will be included uh, on the fact sheet. Um, so the locations where you can pick them up from April 1st to 5th will be here at City Hall. We'll have somebody in council chambers here, a member of our staff, that will be distributing those. We're going to try to limit it to uh, four pair uh, per person, but if you only need one, please only take one. We want to make sure that we have enough for all citizens. And we do recognize that students will be given uh, a pair of glasses through the school district. So if you have kids that are in school, you do not need a pair of glasses for them. They would have already received one from the school district. Uh, and we've partnered with them because they were short a few pairs of glasses to make sure that they had enough for all their students across the Anglophone North School District. Um, we will also be handing them out at the Chatham Public Library during their operational hours, which is located at 24 King Street, the Newcastle Library, which is located at Fountainhead Lane, and uh, we reached out to Care for Beausoleil's library also to see if they could distribute, and that's uh, 30 Beaverbrook, 300, sorry, Beaverbrook Road. And of course, on April 8th, at the Eclipse Viewing Day, that'll be taking place at the Miramichi Airport. And just, uh, just a reminder to everyone that uh, initially we thought we were going to be using the main gate at the airport terminal, but it's actually, there's a gate that is next to the Lafarge plant in between uh, Greenfield Construction and Lafarge. Um, and I've, I've, this is not the exact address, so if you put this into Google, you're probably going to get Lafarge, but it's approximately 257 General Manson Way. There's just a little driveway there. So people will be able to enter in there. Um, we're, we're encouraging as many people to register as possible. We, we know the space that we have available to us can park approximately 1,500 cars. So that's why on our website you can see that there's 1,500 spots available, but that doesn't mean individuals. So if you, put, if you have a minivan and you can put six people in that vehicle, each person will be given a pair of glasses and we'll give one safety sheet to each vehicle as they go in. We're just trying to encourage as many people as possible to register because we don't want people, especially if you're traveling from away, to be disappointed that a sp you were expecting a space and you're expecting a pair of glasses on April 8th but because you didn't register and we're full, we, we, we have no room to accommodate. Um, when we get closer to the actual viewing day, and this also applies to the drone show, we will know approximately how many spaces we have available, and we will start doing some announcements through Facebook to let people know that first come, first serve, uh, if you haven't registered, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll do our best to accommodate. And um, yes, our, I did provide a link here. Uh, 
it's kind of cut off by the uh, the image, but on our Discover Miramichi website, there's direct links to our Eventbrite page for the Eclipse and also for the drone show. All right, so starting off with our schedule of events, uh, the first event is I would consider it more of a private event, but it's certainly attracting people to our community. And it's the Brilliant Labs Innovation and Education Gala that's going to be taking place at the Miramichi Curling Club on uh, April 3rd in the evening. And really this, this event uh, is, is in recognition of achievements of educators across Atlantic Canada who show, um, you know, spec, uh, I guess, um, excel, excel in innovation and how they teach that to their students. So again, it is a private event, but uh, it will be taking place at the Miramichi Curling Club, and again, it is part of our schedule because students and, or sorry, teachers and, and uh, the school district are hosting this particular event. But that leads us into the 10th anniversary of the Brilliant Labs Atlantic Canadian Innovation Fair. So students and, and educators from across Atlantic Canada will be gathering here on Mar in Miramichi on April 4th. And again, it will be taking place at the Miramichi Curling Club, which is located at 21... Uh, not Clover or Cover Road, but Cove Road, um, and it'll be showcasing student innovations across Atlanta, Canada. Now, the morning is kind of a setup and really a, um, some some training that's going on with the students that are there. But there will be public viewing from 12 till 3:30 that day. So, if anybody is interested in going, check. I think it's a, either a donation at the door, but admission will be free, and you'll be able to check out all of the, uh, the, the the creative things that the students from across Atlanta, Canada, have been able to put together. And, uh, and, and I think there's some special things going on there that the, there would be some interactive uh, displays uh, with the school district and also the Brilliant Labs crew uh, that should entertain uh, folks for that afternoon. Moving along to, uh, sorry, moving along to April 5th, uh, the City of Miramichi will be hosting the first ever Astronomy East Conference and Trade Show. That'll be taking place April 5th through 7th at the Miramichi Curling Club again, uh, which is located again at 21 Cove Road. And really it's a, an astronomy conference featuring guest speakers, workshop vendors, and various panels. Uh, doors open on Friday at 12 p.m. Um, and then they will go on till Sunday. Uh, I think they're gonna shut down at around noontime, open nine till 12 at, at noon. Um, there will be an admission at the door. I was speaking to the, uh, the director of the, the conference today. So what you see on the website may not, but it will be a lower price than what they're asking, but there will be a mission at the door. Uh, children under the age of six, I believe, are free, and there is a family rate, and then there's some VIP passes that are available. But again, you can find all that information on the Discover Miramichi website under the Total Eclipse uh, tab. Uh, at the same time, uh, on Friday and Saturday evening, uh, and again, try to, to give some value add to the people that are coming for the conference and also spending the weekend here uh, leading up to the Total Eclipse. The Newcastle Business District will be hosting the Cosmic Jam Fest, which is a uh, basically a, kind of a mimic of Festival 506 uh, for those locals that uh, were able to take that in a couple of years ago. There will be live entertainment at uh, various locations. So the ones that, uh, all the businesses that, that operate either uh, a lounge or a, a pub or a restaurant in the downtown were approached. And uh, the ones that confirmed and have booked entertainment are Three Dog Distilling, Apparel Lounge, Club 10, New Maritime Beer Company, and Mike's Bar and Grill. So they will have uh, transportation traveling around from those locations, and we do encourage you to check out the Discover Miramichi website again, the event tab for the Total Eclipse, to see the, the times uh, and the artists that will be playing at the various locations, because it does vary from location to location. Um, leading up next, this is an event that the City of Miramichi is hosting, and again, it is, will be taking place at the Miramichi Airport. Uh, use, please use the General Manson entrance that we discussed a little bit earlier. And it's a spectacular drone show with basically coordinating lights and sound. So um, don't think of one single drone flying around and doing something neat like aerobatics. Think of 160 drones uh, that are LED lit displaying images in the sky that are interactive. So uh, this, this is like really exciting event kind of first in 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 this area i believe um it hopefully this looks to be something that replaces um 
you know, fireworks in the future. It, it seems to be go trending in that direction. It's, it's being an it's certainly an alternative, but it'll be taking place on April 6th. Uh, the gates are going to open at 7.30, and the show will begin shortly after dusk because, of course, it's lit, so we want to make sure. And there will be, uh, the, the, the lights will be coordinated with a, a soundtrack that's playing in the background. And again, because we're using the airport, we have limited uh, parking. We are encouraging as many people as possible to t please use the Eventbrite site to uh, secure your spot. And uh, you can find that link on our Facebook page or on our um, Discover Miramichi page. And finally, uh, the big day, which is April 8th, uh, which is the day of the total solar eclipse. Uh, again, we're going to be using the Miramichi airport. Um, there will be food trucks. There will be uh, porta potties. Uh, there will be some entertainment leading up to the eclipse, uh, and the gates are going to open at 1.30, and we certainly would love to see as many people from the public and, and visiting uh, visitors to the region uh, take in this location. Uh, it should be, should be quite a day. It's certainly going to be a once-in-a-lifetime um, uh, experience for a lot of us here in, in Miramichi because it won't be coming back for a long time. It will happen again in New Brunswick, but not in Miramichi, so we hope as many people as possible can get out to see that. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll leave it open to any questions that uh, members of council have. Perfect. Thank you very much, Director. Um, any comments, questions, concerns from the floor? Yeah, Your Worship. Thanks. A um, couple questions, um, uh, Director McTavish. First of all, for the main event, the big event, um, the eclipse itself, gates open, it says, at 1.30. What time is the actual eclipse at? Uh, through the chair to Mayor Lord. And so the eclipse starts, the partial eclipse starts at around 3.30. And I'm going to use, like, it's it's like 3.34. There's, you can, there's a website you can actually search this, and it'll actually tell you exactly when it starts, exactly when we get into total, and then exactly when it, it finishes. But just for round numbers, the, the total eclipse will start at around 3.30. Um, the uh, total solar eclipse will take place at approximately 4.30, and then by 5.30, the eclipse will have ended, and people will be making their way home. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that make, that that's probably the best way to... It, it is it about a two-hour sure. window, but we were, we're opening the gates up early to allow people to get parked. Uh, it, it is a bring-your-own-chair type of event, so if you didn't bring a car, if you didn't travel there by vehicle... Uh, please bring your own, you know, folding chair if you want to sit outside. We, we, again, we have no way to tell what the weather's going to be like yet. Uh, it isn't showing up in the, in the, the long-range forecast, but we certainly hope for sunny skies uh, and no winds, no rain, um, and, and favorable temperatures so that people can enjoy the, the day. Great. Actually, I think you just answered my second question, which um, I, I guess you, you answered one during your presentation. So for, for people who, you know, don't pre-register, um, we, the reality is in Miramichi sometimes people won't do that and will show up anyway. If there are spots remaining of the 1500 capacity, they'll be let in at the gate, I guess you've clarified, um, and which is good. And I think people will understand limited capacity. And if you didn't sign up, then there's no guarantee. Um, but you, there will be space for people who don't necessarily arrive in a car. Is that that's correct? So if, if they come by foot or on bike or something, there's an area for those folks as well. Yeah, through the chair to Mayor Lord again. So yes, we will have a drop-off area at the entrance of okay. General Manson Way where people can get dropped off and picked up. Um, there will be a pro police presence there try to encourage people to go in because, again, it's a free event, and as long as we have space, we'd rather have you on the site than parked on the side of the road because mm -hmm. that's sometimes how accidents happen. But um, there will be you know, a drop-off spot. We don't want people sitting around waiting there the whole time. If you're, if you, if you're going to sit and wait, you might as well come in. Uh, and then the same area will be used as a pickup area uh, for people to uh, to gather their family members or friends, whoever was dropped off. But there is a, a pickup and a drop-off area at General Manson Way. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, concerns? No. Um, from my, uh, I guess, chair, wondering about, like, our kind of visitors coming in. Do we have a sense of, like, how the hotels are doing and hotel stays and, and that sort of thing? Uh, to the chair, uh, don't have a sense of how many people are coming from away yet, but I will be able to do a post-analysis based on the registrations for the conference 
uh, based on the registration for the drone show to give you a, a general idea and then I can cross-reference that with our, our data that we'll receive from the tourism accommodation levy to see if there was an increase in this month compared to last month so makes a lot of sense and a similar question on the brilliant labs I know that there was there was numbers thrown around early on about um, how many participants might be coming to that do we have a sense of where they're landing with their registrations uh, to to the chair again, no, I, I don't have a sense of their registrations. A lot of that is, is internal, but I can certainly ask that question post-event to see what their numbers were. And as, as I mentioned before, I think in Moncton last year, they had close to 3,000 people through the school uh, that particular day. So it would be it, very nice to see that. We do know that we're going to get some overnight stays from that because of the educators that are traveling from outside of New Brunswick. But I do anticipate a lot of day trips with the school. Um, and then I know that they've got a caterer lined up to kind of have some uh, snacks for the kids and the students that are visiting that day, so. Um, yeah, and then lastly, um, just a thought. Um, I know, like, I'm getting communication home from the schools that they're having an early dismissal, which is great and I think plays in well to what we're planning. And I'm just wondering about if there's an opportunity to, to get some of our communication and promotion of our municipal events. Um, through the schools because the kids are fired up and excited about this. The countdown is on, at least in my house, um, and it just seems like a real natural way to, to make sure that we do have that 1500 number that we're shooting for. So I just kind of throw that out as a suggestion. Um, signage for the viewing area, would people, like we'll have, that would be well marked, I'm assuming, the day of, of, of the uh, where to park and the entrance and all of that? Uh, Again, to the chair, so there will be signage at the gate. Um, the Our economic development officer, Paul McGraw, is doing a site map up, which we'll be communicating over the next two weeks to kind of help people understand where to get, if you're getting dropped off, where that will be, where the entrance will be. Uh, at the end of the event, we'll be opening up the other entrance on the other side so people can exit from the terminal, but they just don't want the traffic coming in that road and blocking it up. But at the end of the event, we will be flowing people out that way, so we have two exits. Uh, much like we had done in the past with the uh, the air shows that had taken place there. Um, so map, communications, um, there was another question that you had though. Through the schools, I guess, was the... Oh, the yes, thing. yes. Yeah. I, I will, I'll, I'll certainly look at that angle. I, I've, uh, I've always found sometimes it difficult, but because we're a partner in this particular yeah. event with them, it might be a little bit easier for us to communicate what activities are going on with the school district. And, uh, and share that. So mm -hmm. I'll reach out to their communication uh, manager to see if that's possible. And then lastly, if I may, um, the day of the viewing, um, I know we, we advertised entertainment um, in our commercial that has a band. What's the, the details around, um, and I think it says here, there's a opening entertainment. What's the, what's the plan, I guess, what are people to expect in terms of entertainment and package and all of that kind of stuff? So they'll, there will be live, uh, the, the site will be set up with a number of speakers uh, which will be uh, playing music basically throughout the, uh, the, the day while people are arriving and, and also while they're leaving. Uh, we are well, actually, right after this meeting, I have uh, a meeting with uh, a group of uh, female Indigenous drummers. Uh, so our hope is to try to coordinate something with them leading up to the eclipse. Uh, so having them perform and then of course we were also uh, intending to reach out to uh, one of the indigenous elders to come in and do a smudging ceremony that day uh, prior to the drummers playing um, when people are kind of settled but really you know we have food trucks there uh, the uh, there there is um, the uh, new brunswick aviation museum which is located on the same site but it's going to be difficult to access them because they don't want to close the tarmac up if we close the tarmac we got to close the whole airport which that's not something we want to see in case there's an emergency. So there will be, there, although it might be a little bit of a drive, people can go visit the New Brunswick Aviation Museum prior to coming in because the parking lot's separate and then come around and enter the gate. But our, our entertainment is really, there won't be any live bands because it's, it's difficult to uh, plan outdoor events in April and live musicians outdoors in April don't always work, but we do have live music playing, or sorry, music playing during the event and our indigenous drummers, uh, we're having the conversation with them to see if they can perform prior to. Thank you. Any other comments, questions, concerns? No, seeing none, we will move along. Thank you very much, Director. Um, to the tennis slash pickleball court allocation.